my sensors indicate a new episode of Dave's Vintage Apple Tech has just been uploaded. So it really didn't blow up. Uh, that was just a uh, I was just playing around there. Okay guys, so this is a, a Macintosh SC30 case. Um, this was a couple extra cases that I wound up with. The uh, I gutted a couple of them because the boards were just completely wasted in them. And so I just kept the cases and I uh, kept this one because I had a, a bright idea and I kind of started this about a year ago and I just kind of lost interest in it but uh, I'm going to resume it here but anyway uh, what I want to do is I'm going to put a, a Mac Mini in this now I did have one in it originally but I just wasn't really happy with the layout of it so I'm going to get another Mac Mini I'm going to get a 2011 one um, and uh, and the reason being is it can still run the, the latest operating system and uh, it's, it's a little faster than the 2010 and uh, so yeah so and I've been looking online and I kind of got my eye on one so maybe that might be the one that I get here but anyway so uh, and that uh, sh that shadow is just a light here so uh, yeah so and I got smirky here chewing on my tripod smirky please don't do that honey okay so <laughs> so anyway um, uh, this here is just a protective layer on it this is a Enyo it's an 8 inch TFT display. This is actually glass on the front. And, uh, and it's, it's a, actually, it's a very, even though it's a cheap monitor, it's got a really killer picture on it. I mean, you can go up to 1080i, 1080p. I got it set on 107 or, or 720 right now. Um, and then um, also I have the Apple Super Drive in it there. It's right in there you can see it and what I did is you know this was the SC so originally it only had a uh, had a hard drive in it and then it had the one floppy drive in it so what I did is you know it used to be about about there and I just elongated it very carefully got the Apple super drive in it it's not quite shoved all the way up in there but anyway and that's why I want the 2011 too is because uh, if if it has a built-in optical drive already in the machine that this won't work it's one of these where you plug it in after like 2000 uh, uh, was 11 I think uh, when they killed the uh, the optical drive on the IMAX and uh, so anyway anything that's not manufactured with an optical drive that's what you use this is a super drive and it just works off a of USB and uh works pretty good you can get these things really cheap too i mean i think i only paid like 12 bucks for that uh that was a, a couple years ago actually when i got it because when i got the uh 27 inch imac there um i wanted just a super drive because that way i can if i need to burn something or share information i can do it so anyway uh yeah so and uh so the plan is I'll get the Mac Mini in there. Uh, this activity light will, will light up when the machine comes on when I'm done with that. Um, I kind of revealed this a little bit uh, when we had that one uh, when we had that live giveaway. And, uh, so anyway I'll flip it around here and it's got the reset programming switch there. I'm gonna I'm gonna make this functional but I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with it. Um, I will put a an, another fan in it, a cooling fan, to help draw the heat out of it. Even though this doesn't really generate a whole lot of heat, the Mac Mini will already have a fan on it. But it's going to be out of the case, so it's just going to be kind of stripped down in there. Um, and then this USB port, we're going to redesign this. I got a friend that's got a, a 3D printer, and uh, when I decide on the layout, we're going to... Uh, uh, basically do some work on this here because um, I want it to look nice now this was the power cord in 
and uh, there was an on off button here. Uh, I am going to have the on off button here. It'll just be a momentary contact button, but it'll look like the old style rocker switch. And this here, that's where it will plug in. Uh, we'll have the actual socket in there. It looks just like the original, and that'll be attached to the Mac Mini. And uh, so let me pop this thing open here. Show you what it looks like on the ins inside here. So let me just kind of move the case here. And, and as far as the case itself, it's just an uh, empty case. I've got the RF shield in it. I'll probably leave the RF shield in it. Um, but nothing too exciting about that. So when I do a project, I like to I try to make it look nice and clean. I don't want it to look too, um, uh, how do I want to say this? Uh, I'm, I'm kind of picky on it. But as you can see, this, is, uh, this monitor has a lot of connectors on it. And that's what I like about it. This is where the power supply goes to it. And this is the, the power supply. And what I will do is I will... When I get this all done, I will uh, um, probably uh, whack that off and uh, uh, modify that so it looks nice on the inside there. But you can see this is the, the lens for the uh, activity light there. Let me uh, zoom in here on this here a little bit. Wait a second here. So anyway, this is it right there. So you can see it's the 8-inch uh, TFT monitor. And it gives you the model number. It runs off 12-volt DC. Uh, it does have built-in speakers. That's the nice thing about it. When you, when you have this thing turned on, um, you get a lot of volume. Um, I do have, like I said, I do have the internal speaker for this. And I was going to modify it. I took it out. I still have it. I was going to modify it, but I think since this has got the speakers already in it, I really don't have a need for that, uh, you know, uh, for that speaker there, because the um, optical drive kind of encroaches on it, because the slot used to be way over here for that. Um, yeah, so uh, this is my temporary thing. I'm, you know, it's all subject to change. Um, it's just holding it up against the, be excuse me, the bezel here. You can see the gap up in there because I'm not done with this. But like I said, I might get the same monitor. I might try to do the 9-inch and see if I can make it fit. But like I said, I will shave some of this down here to make it fit flush. Um, I'd love to have it all the way against here. But it's just, it's just too much. Uh, I mean, I've got the mounts here. Uh, and like I said, if, even if it has a thinner bezel, I just I don't think you're going to be able to cram a 10 inch in here. It's just going to be too tight. Um, like I said, nine inch would be a little better. And um, so yeah, but anyway, and then like I said, this is the super drive in here, and uh, made some brackets. This this all get painted up gray, so it'll all look nice when it's all done. This is basically held on by double sided foam tape. Um, you could use Velcro if you want, but I went with the foam tape because. It just hold once it sits for a day or two, it's really on there good. So yeah, and uh, so on the Mac Mini, like I said, we're gonna modify the uh, the back of that too. And uh, so yeah, it's it's gonna be pretty cool when it's all done. Like I said, I started this a long time ago. I just kind of lost interest in it and stuff. And this is the brightness knob control here. Um, not sure what I'm gonna do with that. Um, because with that type of monitor, um, it's all done with software, so I don't know how I can do a manual control on that. So without a lot of re-engineering. So yeah. So anyway, so that's project that's on the books here. Um, like I said, I'm just gonna. My next thing is to find a Mac Mini on it here, and uh, that's where we're at on that. But anyway, guys, yeah, so um, it, it'll be pretty cool. And uh, <laughs> I tell you, um, let me uh, swing this over here. 
So anyway, this guy over here, this is the slot load Ruby iMac and DOS dude's got, it has a board, I have my other backup board in it, it works fine, but the board that I gave him, this, this thing has been clear across the country, this is the third time. Uh, and he's had it for a long time because I actually sent him a tore down iMac. It was, I stripped it all down. It's one of my videos. You can go back and I forget what number it is, but you can go back and look at it. Actually, I'll put a link on it. And uh, I sent it to him. And uh, I say I talked to him about three weeks ago on Discord, and he said it was his. It was coming up. This is like his next project he's going to get to. So hopefully, hopefully, I'll be hearing something from him. Hopefully, it's good news to find out why it worked in the very beginning for about three minutes and then it stopped working, sent it back to him, he put a new processor on it, he thought it might have just overheated, put it in and it, you hear the bong, but the screen never comes on. I put it in the other iMac that I had, didn't make any difference. So I'm just waiting, so that way uh, when I get uh, that G4 processor on there, then we can get Leopard running on this guy because the drive, the disc is already set up as a three partition disc. It has 9.2.2 on it, Tiger, which is what I run, and then it has Leopard on it. And uh, as you know, it runs pretty good on the cube there. So uh, this is going to be about 550 megahertz. Um, maybe he can tweak it to 600 megahertz, but hey, if it's 550, it's going to be way faster than what this is already. So. So yeah guys, so anyway, getting back to this here. Um, it's gonna be a, be kinda neat, you know? I mean, um, I, I'm i not one to, I don't really like to modify cases, okay? But this was just kind of like, I had, the case was nice shape on it. And I just thought, you know, this would be pretty cool to put a flat screen in it, put a modern super drive in it, and you know, and then have a little Mac mini in it. And it'd be, Pretty, pretty cool, you know, and uh, that way it, it'll be a useful computer. Um, and that's my that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. Uh, and and in, oh yeah, and then getting back to the G3, um, I uh, made a custom ribbon cable for this, and uh, it does work with the super drive. And I got it out of an iMac. It's like a 2006, I think it is. And it does work. Um, however, um, that was in Tiger. I've never tried it on 9.2.2, so I don't know. But anyway, uh, but it, it's really, uh, with that board, you gotta turn the drive upside down. You got that other board that plugs in the back of it because the connectors are totally opposite on the back of these ever since they built these things. They changed the the uh, connector on the back of it there, and uh, so that's why you just can't swap one in there. And that's why I was kind of hoping I could have done a super drive. I could just do it USB, or I would have just hardwired that into the the uh, on the uh, the board there, made a made a, a connector for it to to plug into the board, but um, not the case. So anyway, uh, that will have a somewhat modern optical drive in it so you can read DVD CDs you can burn them if you want so yeah and uh, just so you know guys I have Frederica she's laying by my foot down there uh, it's my day off so she loves to hang around with, out with her uh, daddy here and uh, I get all the kitties are laying up here but anyway she's a Young Maine Coon Kitty. She's still growing. She's going to be a big kitty when she's all grown up there. So, but anyway. So, yeah, guys. So, uh, that's it. And uh, this is what it looks like when the display's powered up there. And that's at uh, 1080p. And uh, you can adjust the screen resolution on it. It's kind of blown it off the page there because I have to adjust the screen. I just plugged it into my Mac Pro because I plugged it into the HDMI on the back and I got a HDMI to D port converter so anyway this is what it looks like and it's a TFT uh, works pretty darn good and uh, as you can see it's it's got a pretty decent view angle on it too 
right, now I've got the plastic protective on it. This is actually uh, a glass on the front of it. That's why I've got this protected here. I don't want to, but I mean, it's, it, it is very, very sharp. But like I said, uh, it looks pretty good. So I don't know. Um, I like the monitor. I might, I might go and just take the chance and get a nine inch monitor. That way I can get rid of some of this. Um, but, and then I'm going to shave a little bit more of this off to make it bring out more closer to the edge of this. But, uh, yeah, so that's where we're at on this guy. So, okay guys, so anyway, so this is the, our next project here. And, uh, like I said, um, it's, it's going to be a little while. Uh, it's going to take me some time to, to fool around with it, but I'll give you updates on it every now and then. And, uh, it'll be kind of cool when it's all done. But anyway, uh, and I don't know if, what category it fits in. Is it a Hackintosh? Is it a Mackenstein? Hmm. Let me know what you think. So anyway, this has been Dave's Vintage Apple Tech. And oh, and by the way, uh, if you don't know, we do have a new microphone giveaway started. It's going to be another USB Yeti mic. It's going to be brand new in the box. I should get it here in the next couple of days. And uh, that's going to be the giveaway. And so when we get to 500 subscribers, we're going to give that one away. And like I said, this one is international. However, the U.S., Canada, Mexico, I'll take care of the shipping. Anything beyond that, uh, you'll have to help chip in and pay the difference. Okay, because it's very expensive, unfortunately, to ship overseas. So other than that, everybody's eligible. Just comment on video 27. That's the one you want to comment on. On the original giveaway, it's got 500 on the front of the video there, so you can't miss it. And comment, leave a comment, subscribe, and you're in. And then, like I said, we'll do the YouTube randomizer, just like what we did the other one. Mac84, Steve at Mac84, he was a lucky winner uh, last week of the other one. And uh, congratulations, Steve. And uh, he told me he already got it. And so, yeah, that's great. So anyway, guys, so um, that's all I have to say. Guys, have a great week. This is Tuesday, and I hope you have a safe and happy, healthy week. All right, so we will see you in the next video. Bye.